verses 41 to 44. These directions are followed with a needful caution, v. 40 with many other words, to the same purport, did he testify gospel truths, and exhort to gospel duties, now that the word began to work he followed it, he had said much in a little, v. 38, 39, and that which, one would think, included all, and yet he had more to say. When we have heard those words which have done our souls good, we cannot but wish to hear more, to hear many more such words. Among other things he said, and it should seem inculcated it, save yourselves from this untoward generation. Be you free from them. The unbelieving Jews were an untoward generation, perverse and obstinate, they walked contrary to God and man, 1 th 2.15, wedded to sin and marked for ruin. Now as to them, 1. Give diligence to save yourselves from their ruin, that you may not be involved in that, and may escape all those things, as the Christians did repent, and be baptized, and then you shall not be sharers in destruction with those with whom you have been sharers in sin. O gather not my soul with sinners. 2. In order to this continue not with them in their sin, persist not with them in infidelity. Save yourselves, that is, separate yourselves, distinguish yourselves, from this untoward generation. Be not rebellious like this rebellious house, partake not with them in their sins, that you share not with them in their plagues. Note, to separate ourselves from wicked people is the only way to save ourselves from them, though we hereby expose ourselves to their rage and enmity, we really save ourselves from them, for, if we consider whither they are hastening, we shall see it is better to have the trouble of swimming against their stream than the danger of being carried down their stream. Those that repent of their sins, and give up themselves to Jesus Christ, must evidence their sincerity by breaking off all intimate society with wicked people. Depart from me, yet evildoers, is the language of one that determines to keep the commandments of his God, PS 119,115. We must save ourselves from them, which denotes avoiding them with dread and holy fear, as we would save ourselves from an enemy that seeks to destroy us, or from a house infected with the plague. Here is the happy success and issue of this, v. 41. The Spirit wrought with the Word, and wrought wonders by it. These same persons that had many of them been eyewitnesses of the death of Christ, and the prodigies that attended it, and were not wrought upon by them, were yet wrought upon by the preaching of the Word, for it is this that is the power of God unto salvation. They received the Word, and then only the Word does us good, when we do receive it, embrace it, and bid it welcome. They admitted the conviction of it, and accepted the offers of it. They gladly received it. Herod heard the word gladly, but these gladly received it, were not only glad that they had it to receive, but glad that by the grace of God they were enabled to receive it, though it would be a humbling changing word to them, and would expose them to the enmity of their countrymen. They were baptized, believing with the heart, they made confession with the mouth and enrolled themselves among the disciples of Christ by that sacred rite and ceremony which he had instituted. And though Peter had said, Be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, because the doctrine of Christ was the present truth, yet we have reason to think that, in baptizing them, the whole form Christ prescribed was used, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Note, those that receive the Christian covenant ought to receive the Christian baptism. Hereby there were added to the disciples to the number of about three thousand souls that same day. All those that had received the Holy Ghost had their tongues at work to preach, and their hands at work to baptize, for it was time to be busy, when such a harvest was to be gathered in. The conversion of these three thousand with these words was a greater work than the feeding of four or five thousand with a few loaves. Now Israel began to multiply after the death of our Joseph. They are said to be three thousand souls which word is generally used for persons when women and children are included with men, as General 1421, Margin, Give me the souls, General 46 27, 70 souls, which intimates that those that were here baptized were not so many men, but so many heads of families as, with their children and servants baptized, might make up 3,000 souls. These were added to them. Note, those who are joined to Christ are added to the disciples of Christ, and join with them. When we take God for our God, 
we must take his people to be our people. We often speak of the primitive church, and appeal to it, and to the history of it, in these verses we have the history of the truly primitive church, of the first days of it, its state of infancy indeed, but, like that, the state of its greatest innocence. They kept close to holy ordinances, and abounded in all instances of piety and devotion, for Christianity, admitted in the power of it, will dispose the soul to communion with God in all those ways wherein he has appointed us to meet him and promised to meet us. They were diligent and constant in their attendance upon the preaching of the word. They continued in the apostles' doctrine, and never disowned nor deserted it, or, as it may be read, they continued constant to the apostles' teaching or instruction, by baptism they were discipled to be taught, and they were willing to be taught. Note, those who have given up their names to Christ must make conscience of hearing his word, for thereby we give honor to him, and build up ourselves in our most holy faith. They kept up the communion of saints. They continued in fellowship, v. 42, and continued daily with one accord in the temple, v. 46. They not only had a mutual affection to each other, but a great deal of mutual conversation with each other, they were much together. When they withdrew from the untoward generation, they did not turn hermits, but were very intimate with one another, and took all occasions to meet, wherever you saw one disciple, you would see more, like birds of a feather. See how these Christians love one another. They were concerned for one another, sympathized with one another, and heartily espoused one another's interests. They had fellowship with one another in religious worship. They met in the temple, there was their rendezvous, for joint fellowship with God is the best fellowship we can have with one another, 1 JN 1 colon 3. Observe. They were daily in the temple, not only on the days of the Sabbaths and solemn feasts, but on other days, every day. Worshipping God is to be our daily work, and, where there is opportunity, the oftener it is done publicly the better. God loves the gates of Zion, and so must we. They were with one accord, not only no discord nor strife, but a great deal of holy love among them, and they heartily joined in their public services. Though they met with the Jews in the courts of the temple, yet the Christians kept together by themselves, and were unanimous in their separate devotions. They frequently joined in the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. They continued in the breaking of bread, in celebrating that memorial of their master's death, as those that were not ashamed to own their relation to, and their dependence upon, Christ and him crucified. They could not forget the death of Christ, yet they kept up this memorial of it, and made it their constant practice, because it was an institution of Christ, to be transmitted to the succeeding ages of the church. They broke bread from house to house, Cato Oiken house by house, they did not think fit to celebrate the Eucharist in the temple, for that was peculiar to the Christian institutes, and therefore they administered that ordinance in private houses, choosing such houses of the converted Christians as were convenient, to which the neighbors resorted, and they went from one to another of these little synagogues or domestic chapels, houses that had churches in them, and there celebrated they Eucharist with those that usually met there to worship God. They continued in prayers. After the Spirit was poured out, as well as before, while they were waiting for him, they continued instant in prayer, for prayer will never be superseded till it comes to be swallowed up in everlasting praise. Breaking of bread comes in between the work and prayer, for it has reference to both, and is a help to both. The Lord's Supper is a sermon to the eye, and a confirmation of God's word to us, and it is an encouragement to our prayers, and a solemn expression of the ascent of our souls to God.